Now, it's the day after what was a dramatic one for politics, the environment and the economy. Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, confirmed that he is delaying some key climate policies, but he insists that he can still achieve the UK's commitment to reach net zero by 2050. But when it comes to banning the sale of new petrol and diesel cars, the Prime Minister has gone into reverse. Rishi Sunak has pushed the ban back from the original target of 2030 to 2035. But he says he still expects the vast majority of cars, his words, to be electric by 2030 because of improving technology. Overall, the Prime Minister says the UK is still leading the way internationally. We need to strengthen our own auto industry so we aren't reliant on heavily subsidised carbon-intensive imports from countries like China. So to give us more time to prepare, I'm announcing today that we're going to ease the transition to electric vehicles. You'll still be able to buy petrol and diesel cars and vans until 2035. Even after that, you'll still be able to buy and sell them secondhand. We're aligning our approach with countries like Germany, France, Spain, Italy, Australia, Canada, Sweden, and US states such as California, New York, and Massachusetts, and still ahead of the rest of America and other countries like New Zealand. And Mr Sunak insisted the announcement would, ma announcement would make life more affordable for families facing financial hardship. This debate needs more clarity, not more emotion. The test should be, do we have the fairest credible path to reach net zero by 2050? in a way that brings people with us. Since I've become Prime Minister, I've examined our plans, and I don't think they meet that test. We seem to have defaulted to an approach which will impose unacceptable costs on hard-pressed British families, costs that no one was ever really told about, and which may not actually be necessary to deliver the emissions reduction that we need. The Labour Party, surprise, surprise, they were not impressed. Here's the Shadow Environment Secretary, Steve Reid. Britain could lead the world in this, but the government's decided to throw that out of the window. And it will actually cost British consumers more because it costs more to fill up a car with petrol than it would be to power it with electricity. So everyone is a loser from what Rishi, Rishi Sunak has just announced. Well, these motorists welcome the move by Mr Sunak. I would say it's a good call, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. without a doubt, yeah. Just like it's a bit too early here, maybe maybe different in England or something, but I think here in Northern Ireland, I think it's too early for electric yet. I just don't think there's enough charging points. And obviously the price of electric cars is, you know, far away as diesel pedal at the moment too, you know. That makes sense. Uh, it was 20 years too late of bringing in the, net, the infrastructure first. So... What's the mood within the industry here, the electric vehicle industry? We're joined by Mark McCall, Chair of the Electric Vehicle Association in Northern Ireland. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Mark. Is it a good morning? Well, it's interesting, certainly. I think there's two sides to this announcement. Uh, I think, firstly, there's no doubt that this sends out a very confused message. It does risk jobs and investment and harms the UK's credibility on, on its net zero commit, commitments. Anything that, that delays our, our journey to a more sustainable uh, low carbon future increases our dependence on expensive fossil fuels for even longer. You heard Rishi Sunak say it. No matter what the target is, he believes, the official target is, he believes that by 2030 most vehicles here in Northern Ireland will be electric anyway. Do you? Yes, he could be right. I mean, if, if, we, if we do get the support and the infrastructure and, and, and the last reports of this jigsaw, that, that could very well be the case. And consumers are uh, deciding themselves. So we, we do feel that there is an element of, that that is possible. And, you know, when you look into the detail of this announcement, actually not as much has changed uh, as perhaps uh, seems. The, the 2030 ban was originally on hybrid cars. So it, that wasn't when the, when the ban came in. Um, on petrol and diesel, really. It was the ban on, on purely petrol mm. and diesel cars. It's still allowed for hybrids for 2030 to 2035. And then the cutoff was 2035. And that 2035 ban has not moved. So really what we've lost here is that five-year period from 2030 mm. to 2035 when you, you still could have had a hybrid. And Mark, what do you say to somebody thinking of changing their car and saying, you know what, Northern Ireland still doesn't have enough electric charging infrastructure here. It's a fact of life. You know, we cannot deny that. And, and as a group, we've been lobbying for change here for the last six or seven years. But we have to say that the change has finally started. Um, if we look at the Department for Transport figures for last July, mm. Northern Ireland had around 20 rapid chargers. Those are the ones that a lot of people rely on, the ones that you stop for 20 minutes to, to give you a fast charge to, to get on your way. 
We had 20 a year ago, and in July this year we had almost 60. So we, we have tripled rapid charger numbers in, in less than a year. Um, so we've, we've certainly turned the corner here. We have local companies that are uh, rolling out new chargers on a weekly basis. Uh, so th things are definitely changing. And remember, this is 2030 or 2035 we're talking about. We've still got seven years or 12 years. So I think there's time to, to get us uh, caught up. A couple of things. Um, there's a good text here. Somebody says, I've had an EV for two years. I've never had to compete with anyone for a charging station. As I say to all the critics, we live in a relatively small island and in Northern Ireland, our commutes are in general a lot less than GB. Uh, charging the car overnight at home while we're all recharging, brackets sleeping, thanks for that, uh, makes uh, keeping your car topped up very easy. Also, every three-pin plug is a charging point and there's a lot of them. Uh, have a good day. Thank you for that. Um, and then I see in today's Irish News, uh, Sarah was highlighting that electric Electric vehicle ownership in Northern Ireland is up by 133 percent. That is, that is incredible. So it, it, the the idea yeah. that it would be um, an impasse, it would be a barrier to us joining that movement of buying EVs. The idea our infrastructure would get in the way doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah, the the, the Department for Transport figures again quote um, showed that uh, 2022 we sold more uh, plug-in vehicles than 2021 and 2020 combined. So certainly we're seeing that, that acceleration and that ramp up. You can't feel the to see all those green number plates when you're when you're driving around at the moment. So yes, if you if you can charge at home uh, like that that uh, the texture said, it, it, it's so easy. You, and you're driving around probably in around four p per mile at the moment uh, compared to maybe fourteen p for for petrol or diesel. So on a ten thousand mile year, you could be you could be saving a thousand pounds a year. How do you explain Ford, for example, saying this is a disaster? We could have been well ahead of the game. We but now we're going to be behind China, behind America again when we could have been leading the way here. They say that, and yet you have Jaguar Land Rover employing 30,000 people in their UK plants who are saying this is this is sensible to, to take your time with this. Is that, are both of those coming from purely business financial perspectives? Yeah, well, Ford asked for ambition, commitment and consistency, I think was the phrase, you know, and th these industries are, are planning years ahead. And perhaps the, the the ones that are pleased with this announcement maybe are aren't quite as far down the, the road uh, of a change to EVs as some of the other ones are. But certainly, it's it's a big ship. You can imagine that industry, the planning involved building uh, battery factories in the UK. We've got one or maybe one and a half in, in planning. You know, compared to twenty five uh, battery plants around Europe. So we need to be getting on. We we need that consistency and we need the commitment from government. And we certainly don't need uh, U turns or, or moving the goalposts. Thank you very much indeed. Mark McCall, Chair of the Electric Vehicle Association, Northern Ireland. It's almost 10 to 8.